Hidden tunnels under the surface of La Palma's solidified lava are enabling lava below it to flow at faster speeds through the island. Here's what you need to know. As the La Palma volcano continues to erupt after two months, molten lava is traveling down toward the Atlantic Ocean at speeds of up to one meter per second through new lava tubes, according to the Canary Islands Volcanology Institute, cited by CNN, with Harvard University's Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences explaining that these tubes occur when the top surface of a lava flow cools more rapidly than the underlying lava, forming a crust that insulates the lava below, which stays hotter and flows farther as a result. According to the Canary Island Volcano Association, different types of activity at different vents are driving the lava flow. Last month, the extent of the damage prompted the president of a neighboring island to suggest bombing the volcano in order to change the direction of the flow, according to Life Science. As the La Palma volcano shows no sign of stopping its eruption, there is a possibility it could cause a mega tsunami, according to a 2001 study in the Geophysical Research Letters Journal. The study outlined how cracks below the surface of the volcano exacerbated by an eruption could cause between 150 to 500 cubic kilometers of rock to slide into the ocean at 100 meters per second. The New Zealand Herald outlines how the huge force that landslide generated could create massive waves up to 900 meters high that could eventually hit the coast of the Americas at heights of up to 25 meters, with a tsunami reaching Florida around nine hours after the initial collapse. Subsequent studies have played down the risk of this kind of disaster occurring for a number of reasons, informed by new models created after the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami. It has been argued that any collapse of the ridge would not occur with the force described in the original study, with one explanation for that being that it is likely any collapse would happen in stages. Most do, however, agree that any collapse would prove devastating for the Canary Islands around La Palma at the very least. And either way, it fits neatly within the sentiment from a separate, more recent study, which published in the Nature Communications Journal, says that massive volcanic super eruptions really shouldn't be the focus of our attention, because it's much more likely that smaller eruptions will destroy us all first. The point is about being realistic. Researchers say that while eruptions from supervolcanoes happen at intervals of hundreds of thousands of years, lower magnitude eruptions, rated between 3 and 6 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, occur far more regularly and still have the potential to cause mass disruption if they occur in one of seven key pinch points, citing the infamous 2010 eruption in Iceland which grounded flights across Europe and lost the global economy $5 billion, the research points out that a significant portion of critical infrastructure is located near lower magnitude volcanic centers. Near those centers, ash clouds, volcanic gases, landslides, mud flows, earthquakes, and tsunamis could cause massive disruption by snapping undersea cables, destroying crops, damaging power plants, electric grids and pipelines, and blocking maritime passages. In a future scenario where these lower magnitude eruptions interact with key societal vulnerabilities, they could cascade us toward catastrophe if international communications networks, global supply chains, and financial systems were disrupted. In some regions, an eruption could even result in civil unrest and see governments fall. The seven pinch points listed in the report are the northwestern United States, Taiwan, the Chinese-North Korean border, the Luzon Strait, the Strait of Malacca, the Mediterranean, and the North Atlantic. In one compelling case study, it says that an eruption in the northwest United States involving either Mount Rainier, Glacier Peak, or Mount Baker, which would rank at around 6 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, would likely cause mudflows and ash clouds near Seattle. The result of those would be that activity at airports and seaports nearby, which constitute 2.5% of the U.S.'s total traffic, would be forced to stop. From there, estimated losses would reach $7.63 billion of global GDP over a five-year period, according to the study. Other nightmare scenarios conjured by the study include devastation to tech industries near Taipei, where much of the world's computer chip manufacturing is based, or damage to undersea cables in the Mediterranean. It also focuses on restricted shipping access through the Suez Canal, the Indonesian Archipelago, and the Luzon Strait, plus disruptions to aerial traffic between London and New York. The authors of the study emphasize that their point is not to scare people, rather it is to say we should work towards reducing the fragility of systems to these kinds of events. A melting Alaskan glacier may set off a landslide and trigger a tsunami in Prince William Sound, according to a public letter by climate scientists and geologists at institutions including the University of Alaska, The Ohio State University, and the University of British Columbia. This event could happen as soon as next year and no later than 20 years from now, they say. 
The researchers say the Barry Glacier's retreat inland could send its scarp tumbling down the Barry Arm. A complete failure of the scarp will cause a destructive tsunami to crash down Barry Arm and Harriman Fjord, while partially endangering Port Wells. If the scarp fails completely, it would raise waves as high as 1,000 feet, which would threaten fishing boats and the hundreds of fishermen and tourists who frequent the region. Even locations far from the Barry Glacier may experience 30-foot-tall waves. According to the letter, climate change is melting Barry Glacier, and the retreating ice has left a swath of the cliff unsupported by its mass. The loose scarp then entered into a slow-motion landslide that is now showing signs of speeding up. A deadly tsunami struck coastal towns on the islands of Sumatra and Java, Indonesia, on Saturday. The tsunami was caused by an eruption from Anak Krakatau, a volcanic island that sits in the Pacific Ring of Fire in the Sunda Strait. According to Reuters, the eruption caused a 64-hectare portion of the volcano to collapse into the ocean, triggering an underwater landslide that would set off the tsunami. No warning system was triggered at the time of the tsunami. Indonesian officials stated that their tsunami buoy network has not been operational since 2012. According to The Guardian, if a buoy network had been installed around Anak Krakatau, it would have given surrounding towns a maximum of one to two minute warnings ahead of pending waves. Scientists have a theory about what might have caused the tsunami that followed the earthquake in Indonesia last week to be so destructive. The BBC reports the 7.5 magnitude earthquake struck in the center of the island of Sulawesi, triggering six meter tall tsunami waves that crashed into Palu City. The earthquake itself was a strike slip quake, which means the ground breaks horizontally instead of vertically. Scientists say strike-slip quakes often cause tsunamis that are less than one meter tall, not one as tall as the one that hit Indonesia last week. Scientists suspect the earthquake may have triggered an underwater landslide that destabilized sediment underwater, causing it to break free and tumble. Palu's Bay's elongated shape also may have amplified the effect of the tsunami. The earthquake and the tsunami have already caused substantial damage in Indonesia, with more than 1,000 people confirmed dead and many more trapped under collapsed infrastructure in Sulawesi. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.